can see the audiences learn it. There are officials from strategic think tanks, ministries, three services, friendly foreign nations, media personnel, and also the organizers of Second India Defense Conclave 2024, that is ED government. I thank you all for giving me this opportunity to express my views on technological innovation in Indian Air Force in the coming decade. It is indeed an honor for me to talk to this scholarly audience. I will begin by saying, Yato Dharmasto Jaya. That means, where there is dharma, there will be victory. As I believe that technology can be harnessed, but correct actions are important for victory. Aviation has always fascinated all young as well as not so young. Flight of Icarus to death was also due to obsession with flying. Man carrying kites, artillery, observer balloons, recce zeppelins, gliders were all early marvels in aviation technology. Technological innovation, so to speak, signifies complete overhaul of an organization technology system encompassing major changes in configuration, capability, hardware and software that affects people, processes and technology. Outcome of technological innovation is a new or improved product or process whose technological characteristics are significantly different from before. In aviation, I can compare it with different generations of heavier than air aircraft that was born with the first flight of Wright Brothers on 17 December 1903. In aircraft, generational changes make sense when we refer to leapfrogging improvements in performance of jet fighter due to advances in aircraft design, avionics and weapon systems. In general, we can say that technology that cannot be incorporated in the existing aircraft through upgrade or retrospective modification, there is a generational change. And I will just take you through the different generations of aircraft being from the Air Force. First generation fighter jets in a period of mid-1940s to 50s were able to achieve only subsonic speeds and there were no afterburners. There were no radars, no radar warning receivers, no self-protection switches, and the jets had only machine guns, unguided bombs and rockets. Second generation fighter jets in mid 50s to early 60s were able to achieve transonic to supersonic speeds. They had air to air missiles of various types, and aircraft were now equipped with radars and radio warning receivers. During this period, although air to air combat was still in the visual range, radar guided missiles also came into being. Third generation fighters in early 60s to 70s were supersonics and they were able to achieve two mark speeds. These jets were multi-purpose fighter bombers because now in addition to air-to-air -air missiles including BBRs, they could be used for bombing drone. Certain improvements in maneuverability, avionic suits and weapon systems were also seen at that time. Fourth generation fighter jets came in the period of 70s to late 80s. These are supersonic, highly efficient planes. They fly by wire technology and aviation came into being. Aircraft became more maneuverable. Most of this generation fighters can swing roles in air to air or air to ground as opposed to earlier the role specific variegated aircraft. As the cost kept increasing, the concept of half generation increment into the existing platform came into being. For example, the cost-effective stealth features could be added, thrust spectrum to, to the engine could be added. We could enhance the weapon ranges, uh, weapon carrying capacity, the range of aircraft through air to air refueling or add other capabilities such as data link, NCW or ASA radar. Now comes the fifth generation fighter, which is quite a way ahead. It comes in first decade of 2000 and brings a quantum improvement in fighter lethality and survivability. 
Some of the features like low observable materials used on this aircraft, improved situational awareness, use of multispectral sensors located across all the aspects of the airframe are some of these. These aircraft can attack the enemy in multiple directions. The aircraft are networked and help the pilot in maintaining battle space dominance. Taking lead from these generational shifts, if I was to put all the features up to fifth generation into another aircraft and add few more features, enhance the existing features, a sixth generation fighter would be model based design. It will use the tools like AI, data fusion, networking, cyber, and it would be optionally manned or unmanned. The aero engine would have the variable cycle engine and the aircraft may also use direct energy weapons. These generational changes have been transformational as well as innovative. Because my topic is innovation, let me come to the next question and that is why are we discussing the topic of technological innovation in coming decade today? Because Air Force has always been innovating. So before I explore the answer to this question, let me introduce four terms to you which you are already aware of probably. I am sure you are. First is the transformation. It is like complete system overhaul in the technical innovation. Innovation is the second term. It is the change within the boundaries of existing system. Third is the evolution which is slow and steady. And the fourth one is revolution which is unexpected innovation. And the last one is disruptive technology. It is an innovation that may unexpectedly create new category with new and different roles overtaking the existing inventory of assets. So I have talked about the transformation, innovation, evolution, the revolution and the disruptive technologies. So what is different today? Let me answer that question for you. Difference in today's technology is that several of them are disruptive, which has already been spoken by the speakers before me, and they are fast evolving. These technologies have blurred the lines between conventional and asymmetric warfare. Wars are becoming hybrid with the help of these di disruptive technologies. I'll just give one example of robotics. They have the potential to replace human beings in war zones, thereby eliminating the risk of life. That's the kind of kind of disruption that we are talking about. Lot of other technologies have already been referred to by almost all the speakers. At the cost of repetition, I would name a few. The artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual reality, augmented reality, 3D printing, additive manufacturing, quantum computing, hypersonics, drones, autonomous systems, manned unmanned team, cyber warfare, information warfare that includes media, all are disruptive and they are fast evolving. Combination of these technologies can help win wars without firing a bullet. Due to democratization of innovations, weapons and information, non-state actors and small mercenary groups can acquire these inexpensive war-making technologies effortlessly due to easy access in open market. Air Force needs to be prepared to counter the broad spectrum of threats, in addition to maintaining technological superiority and strategic edge over adversaries. Over the years, Air Force capabilities have been based on operational experiences in real conflict situations, as well as exercises within the country and with friendly foreign countries. Many lessons learned from these experiences have been incorporated in our doctrine. In the dynamic scenario today, Assimilation, practice and application of these new concepts is continuously evolving due to capabilities being offered by disruptive technologies. Air Force has the primary responsibility of air defense of sovereign airspace of the nation. Therefore, needs to be ever ready for defense of the nation. The challenge is to maintain the sustain and sustain the legacy weapon systems as well as at the same time upgrade and acquire state-of-the-art modern technology weapons. In last about four to five years, certain events, all of us know we have gone through it, the outbreak of pandemic COVID-19 followed by conflicts have disrupted supply chains worldwide. 
we are still feeling the pinch of it. This has not only strained the sustenance of legacy systems, but has also impacted new, new inductions. Air Force has worked out the mit mitigation strategies to overcome the challenges, and we have transformed these challenges into opportunities. Air Force is now looking at embedding disruptive technologies in legacy systems to enhance the capabilities and become self-reliant in maintenance and sustenance of legacy systems. Air Force has also exploited the available design margins within the limits of safety to extend exploitable life of the systems by undertaking scientific studies. We have also taken a clarion call to accomplish Atmanirvar Bharat mission. MSMEs, startups, academia, R&D sector, industry, private sector, public sector, all are being involved in developing indigenous solutions through various schemes. Push is being given to foreign OEMs to increase the work share in India and set up more and more joint ventures with Indian industrial partners. Our base repair depots have renewed focus on repair, replacement and refurbishment of legacy systems. Most of the new acquisitions are from indigenous sources. Air Force has evolved new ways of countering asymmetric threats and be prepared for hybrid warfare by integrating most of the technologies mentioned a few minutes ago. The next challenge is to harness disruptive technologies in most effective manner and continue evolving. The shelf life of knowledge of technology today is just about three years. It has reduced phenomenally. We have to continuously evolve. I will now speak about, about few technologies that we are looking at. We are trying to enhance the effectiveness and value of training and maintenance by use of AR, VR. This will reduce the time required for training, help op optimize exploitation of actual wep weapon platform in training role, and standardize the maintenance practices. Lack of skills and expertise at dispersed, remote, and deployment locations will no more be any limitation. We are also exploring the use of AI, such as predictive maintenance, health monitoring, exploitation of design margin, reduction in sensor to shooter time, thereby reducing the or shortening the UDA loop. Use of quantum technologies and data fusion in sensors in multi domains of aerospace, land, sea, including cyberspace, to improve response time in joint and integrated scenario. Use of electromagnetic and laser energy systems as well as the counter weapon systems. Use of dual use, uh, dual space technologies that can help and have commercial value. Hypersonic technology that can reduce the time to address adversary in any part of the world in a matter of few minutes to few hours. Drones with multiple applications such as recce, sighting, attack, covert operations, damage assessment, inspection, disaster relief, medical support, supervision, security, and supply chain. The Air Force derives its strength from aerospace parts exclusive attributes of reach, mobility, responsiveness, flexibility, offensive lethality, and trans-domain operational capability. The multi-role capabilities of modern-day platforms and weapon systems offer a wide range of opportunities. These platforms are capable of rapid role change and thereby provide multiple operation options to the aerospace power practitioner. Therefore, it's vital that we upgrade our capabilities and integrate disruptive technologies in our legacy systems as well as in new acquisitions indigenously and become self-reliant. We also endeavor to joint planning, centralized command, distributed control and decentralized execution that remains at core of our doctrinal beliefs. These concepts have been incorporated in our reviewed doctrine based on outcomes of various studies undertaken during the process of doctrine review. In the end, I would say that in current era, the nature of warfare is rapidly evolving with technology emerging as a decisive factor in outcome of conflicts. Air Force must adopt comprehensive policies that not only integrate cutting-edge innovations but also ensure their effective and secure deployment. The objective is to maintain strategic superiority and safeguard national security in an increasingly complex and contested global environment. Technologies have been always mystifying. 
but they are after all invented by human beings. Therefore, harnessing these technologies is always possible unless we humans allow them to become uncontrollable. Air forces have always been technologically intensive and would continue to remain so. We need to keep pace with fast evolving contemporary and futuristic technologies. I would like to end my talk with a shoka, with shoka that goes like this. Yuddhecha pramuke sene sarvanni graham yuyuddha kaem cha prithviyam cha vidyamekam viruddhu buddhim. Meaning, in wars where leaders seek to control everyone, those with wisdom recognize that true control lies in the unity of body and earth. That is what we need to master without fearing the disruption in technologies. Thank you and Jai.